Okay. The magic, the magic is happening. Good. <laughs> right, on the count of three. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three. It's funny to think, because um, I was doing a Speedmaster video and I was looking at the old footage. A lot of it is in public domain and, and you can just download it of the interior of the lunar module and just looking, oh, okay. at, yeah, looking at the machinery they had and I was just thinking, my God, it must have been cutting edge at the time, obviously, but if, like I'm looking at what we're doing to set this up, right? <laughs> this is far more sophisticated than they ever had. And, yeah. and look what they did. And look what they did. You know, yeah. uh, the people who built the LEM, the lunar landing module, it's Grumman, is uh, in Beth, uh, is a Long Island company, Bethpage. Right. right. And um, there's a museum out here, the, uh, oh my God, I can't believe, it. anyway, it's in Garden City, it's, it's an aviation museum, and they have, the act, they have a LEM, the real oh, thing. Wow. Yeah, oh, really cool. God. Since Grumman was a Long Island company, they, uh, they loaned it out. So, super cool. You can't go in it, but it's f like everything on the inside is, is legit they, real. They, they made jets, right? Grumman was most no, best known for making the F-14 Tomcat. Yeah. Right, yes. That's where I knew the name. Right, Top Gun. Right, right. Top yeah, Gun. Uh, Top Gun. And then I think the, the, the it was kind of put to the wayside in the late 80s. Uh, and then F-18s or the new Top Gun jets. Right, right. Welcome to uh, <laughs> Aviation Chat <laughs> with Mark. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And once again, I'm joined by Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? Doing very good. How are you? Good, thank you. We're on time today. We <laughs> are. We are on time. I was just thinking, you know, you just redid the intro, what you know, once, and then yeah. uh, last month's video where you were trying to say that Japanese company's name, yeah, <laughs> and that's how you opened with with the blooper reel. And I want mm. people to know that was not staged or fudged i sat here for probably a good 120 seconds watching you try to say the name of the company you know what it is i i don't know if i've ever told you this but i i am dyslexic so sometimes you have I told get, me yeah yeah and i get these blocks and i just can't I yeah can't do it right it, you was, know? it was very amusing from my yeah. end. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad. Right, so today uh, we're going to tackle a controversial subject. Yes. Um, I forget what the title we had, but it was Top 10 Watches We Love to Hate and Watch Controversies. Yes. And, and, and we each took a different, we took a divergent path, you and I. Completely which different. Which was, I really, I really liked. Because you're covering things that I'd love to talk about. Right, and I'm probably right. covering things that you like to talk about, so it's kind of nice. Like, it's, it's nice that way. Good, good. Oh, uh, let's do wristwatch check. Before oh we my goodness, forget. I almost forgot. So, yeah. so for you, it's a premiere. No one has ever seen this, I don't think. Da mm. Damasco's releasing a new diver, um, and oh, I, nice. I've had it for a few weeks already. Nice. Um, they're releasing it on the 22nd. So today's the 21st. We're filming. So by the time this right. goes out, obviously. So it is a D sub. Oh my God! Look and at it that. is it, in full. Their damaged, their damaged coating, um, diver, with their in-house A26 movement. Um, wow! So I've been sporting it for a couple of weeks. Oh my goodness! This thing's a, it's a beast. It's a beast. It's awesome. I love it. So I'll cover it on my channel. Lovely and uh, very mascu masculine, masculine-looking. Yes, yeah. which is something I I, I require. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went into the archives and I pulled out a Seiko white. Night. I don't what know if you ever. Is that? I've never seen yeah. that. Before. Yeah. So it's a silver waffle dial with a stainless steel bezel insert. Uh, it's a seven S twenty six. It's it's a diver. Um, I want to say the reference is SKXA seventy one or something. I really. Wow. I, I kind of lost. I kind of lost what it was. But oh yeah. I've never I mean, seen. I that bought before. this used a good fifteen years ago. 
wow. 14 years ago. So, so yeah. what, what happened to it? You've just been sitting in a drawer? It's been sitting. It sits in the... You know, I'm having... I don't know if I told you. I'm having a watch chest made. Yeah, you told me. With pull-out yeah. drawers and stuff. Yeah. And, and I actually just got billed for all the... I'm having all the cushions handmade by some... Uh, they're almost like Amish in, in like Ohio. But they're like right. old-time seamstresses. And there's something, I just got the bill for the cushion. So I know it's almost done. So it's going to be a huge chest, and I'll send you pictures when I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of going through some of my old watches to kind of count how many I had. Right. And I was like, oh, I haven't worn this in a long time. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So it, it's very monsterish. It, it Kind of. Um, yeah, except it's... But the hands is SKX. Yes, absolutely. It's a 7S26 movement. It is, a, I guess it's a stainless steel bezel. Um... I guess, is it an insert? I don't even know. Yeah, it's an insert. The bracelet is in, the bracelet is, is integrated. Yeah, it looks like a Nautilus. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Well, you extraordinary. Know. Uh, that's the thing about Seiko. You, you, you don't these... know what they have. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. 100%. Yeah. How about you? Wearing Seiko as well, I'll show you my little ah. James Bond inspired mod, Big Crown. I like that crown. Um, yeah, really, really big. Inspired by the um, 6538 from the early, early uh, Sean Connery. Okay, cool. Mariner days, yeah. Cause Very nice. This is the second time I've had it back. I, I did a video. I'll put a link there for you guys if you missed it. Oh, and by the way, guys, also check out the last episode. I, I can't do two. Can I do two at the same time? I have no idea about cards. Uh, You're the I, producer. I tell you what, guys. I put the card for this here and then after there you go there you go it's perfect 38 millimeter right you know no date i think Very it's nice. the nh nh 36 well well, well 36 has a day and a date but they just take out the mechanics and it works does it have a ghost position no it doesn't then it's an nh 38 right that was it you see i just done a video and i've already forgotten that's okay that's why yeah. i'm here <laughs> I'll keep you honest. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. Oh, great segue. Oh, so, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know where you're going, because I saw yeah. your list. When we were discussing what we're going to do, right, and you said, oh, top 10, this, or top 10. I'm like, oh, enough with the top 10s already. Can we do something <laughs> different? And then you had this nugget at the end, watches we love to hate. And I was yeah. like, okay. The first thing that popped in my mind was the Ulysse Nardin freak. Right, I've got to look okay. this up. Oh, yeah, I did look this up. Yeah, T tell I me mean, about it. It's a freak. So yeah. UN came out with it uh, in 2001. It's a, it's a uh, tourbillion-based watch. One of the first watches, I might, if not the first production watch to use silicon parts in the escapement, under obviously the direction of Rolf Schneider. He was the, the big UN guy. He passed away, I believe, several years ago. Uh, but what was interesting about the watch, and I'm sure you'll throw up a picture, is there's no crown, <laughs> there's no dial, and there's basically no hands, more or mm. less. The movement is the hands, or the movement are the hands. The movement is the hands. Right, right. So like one carriage, of a, you know, rotates once in one tourbillon that rotates once an hour is the minute hand. And then there's another one geared underneath. That's the hour hand. Um, mm -hmm. So seven day power reserve, because it's not an auto. Um, you wind it by spinning the case back. You take the watch off and it has a wind direction and you spin the case back. That's, so that's how you wind the spring, and then to set the time, you, you spin the bezel. I don't know if there's an interlock or something, um, so you don't, you know, accidentally change the time. Um, but yeah, you change, so, so there's no crown, no crown interface. So totally different interface. Everything about the watch is totally different. It's very um, avant-garde for, for a brand that yeah. is synonymous with marine chronometers, very classic. Which I... I own one. You know, I, own, I own the Marie Macarena. And this was just such a departure from everything. I thought the name was Freak was awesome. They made mm. Freaks with transparent blue sapphire plates in it. They did so many different things. I actually didn't know this. They're still making them today. Every year they like come out with another one, another Freak. Right. And the Freaks are actually, this was their, the originals were about 50 grand, somewhere around there. They're right. actually coming out with a Freak now that's going to be around 20, 21,000. Not sure if that was Euro or US dollars. But okay. I was like, well, that's not, uh, again, <laughs> I hate yeah, to say yeah. it. Like I said in the other video, like, oh, a $100,000 paddock is not horrible. It's not horrible. But, a, you know, a $20,000 watch for something like this that's true high watchmaking, I thought wasn't 
horrendous. So this is probably the only entry on the list that might actually make it onto my wrist one day because I would right. love to own one. It, but it was a freak then, and 20 years it's later, still it's still a freak. a freak. When you look at it, you don't think watch. You think, what the hell's wrong with this thing? Yeah. Uh, so that's why it is my first entry into Nice. That is a really day. interesting... Uh, yeah, and, and then when you see the design, like on the minute hand, it's a gear train, and the gear train extends out to the inside outside of the case. And as the gear moves, there's a whole gear track on the inside of the case, and that's how it spins the hour mm. hand, the, the minute hand. So, so cool. It, it's almost as if it challenges every kind of preconceived notion of what a wristwatch you know I, I, do. I, I, it's funny you say that because that's something I think about a lot. You know, like if you ask somebody to design a, a a new movement they're yeah. gonna start with the basics it's gonna be a certain escapement it's gonna have a, a certain going train a certain winding train all these things because we all know what watches are but if you took somebody that had no idea what a wristwatch was and said i want you to make something that portrays time this is kind this reminds me of something that you would get it's like a total mm. outside the box thinking kind of thing yeah so that's yeah. why i really dig it and and I presume that its strengths, uh, which is certainly this, uh, the the fact that it's kind of reinventing it in a way. Yes. Is I I'm obviously it's the most it's the divisive thing about it. You're even yes. gonna really love it or hate it. Yeah. Have I you seen one in in person? Yeah, I saw one at a UN dealer when I got my Maxi Marine chronometer. They had a freak in the case. I didn't hold yeah. it, but I saw it, and it's you know it's weird looking. Yeah, it's and weird. they're big and they're boisterous. They're not exactly small because um, there's a lot of mechanics inside. Um, but right. damn, it's so cool. It's virtually transparent. Like I said, trans usually they're transparent or there's something else going on. But they're just so cool. Yeah, it is really cool indeed. And and it's a perfect example rather of when something is so daring and different. It's almost guaranteed to divide opinion. Right. So I should. Uh, yeah, you I should. You should preface. Yeah, I should. I should preface this. So, I was kind of a lot of mine are, are, are what I think should be controversial. I agree. Um, and mine is very much from the perspective of a YouTuber and a watch enthusiast, that kind of thing. Right. For me, a, 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 a controversy. I find controversial, and I, 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 I hate this, and I, and I hate the fact that um, this is a thing, even, but. Watches in exchange for reviews. Man, it's one of my talk about pet talk about pet peeves, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's to me, it kind of undermines the point of the review. And brands every day do this to me. And they say, "Oh, uh, could you please review this?" They do watch? it to me too, and my channel is minuscule compared to yours. Please review it. You can keep it, and blah blah blah. It's like what? Well, th well th thank you very much. Right. But that's not how I operate. Right. You know? And this kind of goes into why I don't really do. Well, I don't do sponsored reviews. When I review a watch, I, I have to be impartial. It has right. to be, you know, I, I, I have to be able to critique the watch. And some of the, the um, and, and a, lot, a lot of this has to do with like marketing firms. And they, they think that, um, oh, you do a sponsored review. And then, um, but, but, but then I can't say anything negative about it. Right. What's the, what's the point? What's the point of the review? There are brands that, that are really open. And for example, I just reviewed um, Cuervo y Sobrino. It's, it was a mini review because I already reviewed them. But I was very critical. Right. I, I, I was almost worried that, my God, they're, not, they're never going to talk to me again. Right. Well. Um, and, but actually, they replied. They said, thank you so much. Um, and they will, they, you know, they lent it in. All I'm right. asking is, is, is the shipping back, right? Correct. Yep. That, to me, that was an unbiased, genuine review. Yes, you know, and and other there are other brands that are not willing to lend anything in. That is correct as well. They don't want any criticism, and it's like, well, how, I'm not going to talk about your brand. It's like, how can I recommend your brand if I right. don't, you know? Right. And one way around this is I just buy the watch. Right. Another way is that I work with people like Moya or you who are authorized dealers, and that way it's kind of like, well. Here, have this, you know, I'll lend you the Seiko. Fine, I'll get the Seiko. I wear it for a week. I give my my honest impression of it mm -hmm. and you take it back. Anyway, this is all the mechanics, the boring behind the scenes stuff of, of having a channel about watches. Right. But it still it irritates me. And it's just like it, it almost kind of makes me not hate the brand, but, but um, dislike them a little bit, you know? I get it. I get it. I mean, I can, I can say a ton on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, well, well, first of all, so my opinion to that is, you know, before I started my own brand, you know, people started, you know, they would say, oh, will you, s- can you send me, like you just said, XYZ for review? Mm. And I kind of like, I don't want to assume anything, but I'm like, you tell me a little bit how it works. They're like, well, you send me the watch. I, I say some nice stuff and I post it. And I said, okay, well, when do I get the watch back? Well, you mm-hmm. don't get the watch back. I said, well, I, so this is my thing. I feel like it's like a restaurant critic going into a restaurant, proclaiming themselves as said restaurant critic, asking for a free meal, and then walking out and reviewing the restaurant. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't, I, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense sense to me and this is one of the primary reasons why people ask me often how come we don't see islander reviews on big channels and i say simply if you look it's every it's smaller channels because i have a stack this tall of mm-hmm. boxes filled with samples when i send them out the photographer he sent he takes all the plastic off so i take them back and i leave them well, they're there they're samples somebody wants one i'll send it back and i'll give you a label and you can send it back to me after you review it after you review it mm. I, I think a lot of the I mean, we could talk about YouTube revenue, but the revenue you make from YouTube is not a whole hell of a lot, no. um, even even a very large channel. Uh, so I, that, obviously, that's how they supplant their revenue is they'll sell the watch afterwards and you know mm. net a couple hundred bucks off of it or, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have tons to say on it, but you know, yeah, I'm glad you yeah. brought it. I'm glad you bring it up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I think it's an um, it's an important thing, and I decided. Uh, um, you know, when this channel started growing, I decided I, if I'm going to do proper watch reviews, I can't. They can't be sponsored, and right. they can't. And um, you know, it's it's funny because I, I got I, I got given a gift fairly recently, and um, it, was, it was lent in, and I was I was emailed them. I was like, oh, can I? Uh, um, would you mind sending me the shipping so I can return the watch, please? And this was an expensive watch. Yeah. And they were like, no, no, you keep it, you keep it. And they were very insist- insistent, like, like a gift, like yeah. to say thank you. Anyway, I, we, I said, would you like to do a giveaway? Um, you know, there you go. That's one way of doing it. And then a friend wanted it, mm-hmm. and uh, he donated the, the cost of the watch. Oh, he nice. Said, How much is this watch to charity? Very nice. You know, and I thought, perfect. Okay, everyone, good. Everyone, everyone wins. wins. Yeah. So I'm going to now go on to Hugh Blow, <laughs> which a couple of years ago, um, I had a buddy who was selling, oh, I think it was a spring drive chronograph. And I said, you know what? I'll review it on my channel. Just like, hey, spring drive technology, really cool. Mm-hmm. So the whole video was about that. But I mentioned that he was using the funds to purchase a Hugh Blow. Just totally. Oh my God, people lost their minds, right? <laughs> I didn't even think anything of it because I know the brand and, yeah. you know, I go to the watch shows and whatever. I know they're expensive and I couldn't believe that, you know, half the comments were, what is wrong with this person? Who, mm. who in their right mind would take the money? You're looking at a two mugs. What yeah, the hell? sorry. Sorry, what this is What the hell just happened? <laughs> this is, this is tea. This is tea. This is water. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Nothing gets by me, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, well, so many of the comments were about what you know. Why would you do a? Why would you sell a Seiko for a Hugh Blood? It doesn't make any sense. Mm. And I'm like, wow, I, I didn't know there was so much hate for Hugh Blood. So it always stuck in the back of my mind. So when again, yeah. when this video concept came out, I said, you know what? I want to read a little bit into this. I mean, there's not much to say. They're about 40 years old, uh, so they've been around for a while. But I mm. guess they have a very, it's a very polarizing brand. Hublot means porthole in French. That's why every watch mm. kind of looks like a porthole with the, the ring around it. It's nautical, so they're always on a rubber strap. Mm-hmm. Um, they did the Big Bang, which I remember when the Big Bang came out in 2004, which many people say was a ripoff of the uh, Royal Oak Offshore. Royal Oak, right. right? Yeah. They also do loads and loads of limited editions to the point where... They have unlimited limited editions, so nothing's really mm-hmm. limited at this point. People consider them ugly, which that's, hey, that's your own deal if you consider yeah. it ugly. That's fine. Yeah. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Something I found that I think, I guess, upsets a lot of people is that they're extremely pricey. And yeah. then while they do have some of their own calibers, a lot of them are just Salida based movements. Um, right. So it's right, so, right. you know, so you're spending 15 or 20 grand on a watch and it's got a Salida movement in it, which is a movement I can get in a Squale for, 
you know, 500 bucks. So mm. why should I pay? You know, and I hear this all, argument often, not just with Hublot, with a lot of different brands, you know. Oh, yeah. it's, it's got yeah. a, you know, NH36 in it, it's $600. I get an NH36 base watch for 200 But anyway, um, so I think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. The, the one thing with Hublot that I totally remember, because I was at a watch show and I couldn't believe this, you know, a lot of these companies come up with their own materials, Rolesium, Rolasaur, mm. and mm. you know, combinations of materials. Um, we talked about it, and I think in, in the in the last video, one of them was combining ceramic and titanium or something that you had found. Yeah. So, uh, he, yeah, I forgot what it was, but uh, Hublot married aluminum and magnesium, and they called it Hublonium, <laughs> which is just such, I mean, it's a G-rated show, but it's such a weird term, and I remember... Sitting at a dinner with <laughs> magazine editors. Why is that funny? I don't know. And he's like, did you hear about Hublot's material? It's new material. It's called Hublonium. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Why? I thought it was a joke. Yeah. It I thought like it joke. was a joke. I mean, it's yeah. not. So I, that to me is <laughs> almost like jumping the shark kind of thing. Like now you're going a little bit too far. Um, but I think just definitely just Hublot is a brand. People just really love. I think they just love to hate it. And when I researched... Now, I actually researched this, and a lot of people are just like, you know, someone will say, hey, why does everyone hate Hublot? And people will give the reasons. And then finally, mm. there's someone with, with a brain that says, you like what you buy. If you don't like it, you don't buy it. You know, yeah, why yeah. do you have to smash it? And, and, and I like that. I'm kind of, you know, I'm always a you wear what you want kind of guy. Yeah, I, so, I have to interrupt here because I, I, this phrase has been stuck in my mind for weeks now. Um, and I have to say a shout out to Cesare, uh, this Italian watch channel. He's a he's a real watchmaker and he has mm -hmm. a, a, great, a great channel. He said this thing, and I'll say it in Italian and then I'll translate. He said, um, uh, non c'è orologi belle, non c'è orologi brutti. C'è solo quelli che ti piace e non ti piace. So he said, there's no, there's not ugly watches there's not beautiful watches there's only watches that you like or you don't like that's very true beauty and I, behind the beholder exactly and this has stuck with me yeah. ever since and yeah I, I but the thing is not to bash people for their for their choices Cor you know? Cor that is definitely true that's definitely yeah. it's like making fun of someone because you think they're ugly i mean that's that's just yeah. totally not right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly i have to say the hublot fusion the classic 38 mm -hmm. millimeter yeah i've had it in my watch list in it's the not horrible ebay yeah it's, it's not horrible at all kind of like it it's kind of classy yeah. yeah up your alley i would say yeah i like the slightly kind of modernist design I, as long as it's not big and it's t and it's right subtle. and that's where a lot of people go off with them like the off you know the big bang and stuff yeah 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 you yeah. know they've been, been riding the big bang horse for like 15 years or something it is amazing how fast they expanded considering because if you go to london they got the store mm -hmm. one of the most expensive neighborhoods to have a store in mm -hmm. uh, and in one of the most expensive cities in the world and i'm just thinking like they make that much money they can afford you don't have to make money. Don't forget, a lot of it is, that's what you're thinking. And so the, you got to go, go like the opposite. Think, if you're Hugh Blow, I want to be here because people will think I sell that many watches. Right. I mean, really, like, look like a paddock boutique. Do they really sell that many watches? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they do. Uh, you know, on Fifth Avenue or something. Well, Fifth Avenue is a bad example <laughs> right now because, <laughs> yeah. you know, the right. city's dying. But I often think about that with some of these stores. You know, you walk into uh, the Wynn Hotel. Rolex has a store. I've never mm. seen so many friggin' Rolexes in my life. I'm like, wow, they sell that many Rolexes? And maybe they do, maybe they don't. But it's mm. impre but it impresses it impresses me. Yeah, yeah. Cool choice. Very cool choice. Thank you. Definitely a Marmite watch. Yeah, see, now I know what that yeah. means. So. Yeah. <laughs> So a new watch comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. The, I'm, I know just, the, I'm kind of excited. I'm like, ooh, cool. And then I get recommended. YouTube for once recommends, you know, not not the pretty little cat jumping out of a tree. It recommends something I actually want to watch. Right. And I click on it, and it's a person. I'm not going to name names, but it's a person just reviewing the watch from pictures. Yeah. But then, and then going so far as to critique it. Right even negatively right and i'm just like well first of all show me the watch right show me the watch let's see the watch second of all you know like 
we all know, well, I presume this was common sense, that uh, perceptions of a watch can drastically change after yeah. being on the sure. wrist. The best example for me has to be the Rolex Explorer. I always, in the past, uh, not discredited, that's the wrong way, I always disregarded it. Okay. As boring, I thought. Right. What's the big deal? No right. day. Uh, Simple, just a couple of numbers on a dial, three exactly. hands. Right. Exactly. Then I borrowed one and I fell in love. Right. And that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to experience these things. Understood. I'm with you. Something I also would like to say is that uh, when we do our top 10 lists, you know, when I, I would never, ever recommend a watch that I haven't tried, mm -hmm. that I don't know about, that right. I don't, haven't experienced. You right. Know? I understand. And it's the same, same goes for you. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It blows my mind. This is, this is, uh, this is lunacy. You know, lunacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Sorry, it sounds like a mini rant, but... Um... No, well, it is, and I, I totally agree, and, but I'll, I'll play devil's advocate for just a split second. So a lot of the... Go for it. You know, a lot of smaller YouTube channels can't get the watch. So that's kind of what they have to do. You know, like, they can't... Like, if it's a new Speedmaster, they're not going to go out and buy it just to review it, so they'll review the photos. Um, and that's pretty much all you get. Um, but I've seen larger channels doing it as well, and that, to me, is like... Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I agree with you. You yeah. can't really... Until it's in the hand, you can't really say anything. Exactly, exactly. Especially negative. Especially negative. I, I get a reaction video. I mm. get that. Okay. Like, oh, what, yeah, ooh, what the hell? Palm leaves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's different. Right. That's not a review. Correct. When you were, use that word review, it's, yeah. it's like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Um, because there's tons of examples, like even the flighty, right? Yeah. 42 millimeters, I would have gone, nah. It's too big, but then it wears tiny, it wears completely differently, and blah, 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 blah. And now you can't remove it. No, no, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I will go with uh, Vincero. Right, this is interesting. They reached out to me, I think it was last year, a year, a year and change ago, to be one of their vendors, which I clearly, I have no interest in doing. Um, yeah. And again, if... Well, not, I guess if you own a, you listen to our damn freak, great. If you own a Hublot, I, I'm not poo pooing on you. If you own a Vincero, mm. it's fine. It's just not the watch for me, and I just don't feel like. I feel like they're not lying, but I feel like they're not exactly being truthful either. Mm. Um, you know, so I read the whole backstory. They found it. In, I actually have no notes on them. I just remember they were founded in 2014, a couple of guys, and they claim that they do all their own engineering and design, and and they didn't like the samples that they got from China, so they started their own factory, and it shows them all huddled over, you know, blueprints, and and I'm like, <laughs> and then you look at the watches, and I'm like, well, that's a catalog watch. Yeah. It's the same watch 10 times with different dials and different hands. Now, granted, they're probably selling watches hand over fist. Do you know what's hard to find? Reputable, good-looking watches for under 200 bucks. Reputable. 150 bucks. Um, and if it gets you into watches, then bravo. They've done great and, you know, we'll get you into something different down the line. Um, but I look at this and I'm like, well, it's a $10 watch. Maybe. Mm. I mm. make, I'm stretching it. You know, Daniel Wellington's are like four bucks. So these are chronos. So these are probably about 10. Mm. Um, and I'm thinking like, wow, $150. They're just, I mean, they're <laughs> they're rolling in the dough. Um, but I, I think but they become popular because you see them in, in the news feed. I see them in the, the Facebook ads or the Instagram mm. feed. And, and I look at the ad and I'm like, wow, it's, you know, oh, I see a guy. He's got, I see a watchmaker bent over with the loop on his eye. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I look at the watch and I'm like, that's not really a and that watchmaker ain't building that watch. I got news yeah, for you. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Like I said, I just feel like they're not being totally truthful um, in in saying where they in, in saying where they come from and, and what they do. Uh, mm. I know you you're gonna cover something similar. Very similar. Yeah. See, I feel like I'll say it again. Daniel Wellington, MVMT. I feel like these guys were the pioneers. Sure. Uh, we could poop on them as much as we want, but they were the pioneers. I mean, MVMT sold to Movado for sixty million dollars, mm -hmm. so good for them. But now everyone, you know, other people doing it, and this is kind of, I'm like, oh, it's, it's been done already. It's been done already, people. 
they they took it to a different level because listen i i i've never handled one so i honestly can't right right but i have to say this that they are they've reached out to me you know they they, uh, they offered me to do a sponsor review and it's it's not something i'm i'm interested right. in doing they're very savvy with the instagram uh instagrammers oh, yeah. well they're marketing the sure yeah. yeah they're very they're very good at it um yeah. i think they took it to that different level of like um trying to kind of appeal to a certain level of watch enthusiasts yes i think so yeah not just people that into fashion and not really into watches right um, more of a millennial kind of thing yeah. i guess you know so some lady emailed me not long ago and she said oh my son is really looking after i, I guess she must be on long island because why else would you ask mm. me uh of, of vincero and she gives me the part number she he really wants this for his birthday blah 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 and I said, I don't sell it. I said, uh, you know, I don't know where you can get it except for their website. I said, but you know, for hundred and fifty dollars, look for something. Look for another brand. Look for something else. I think something you might mm. might be more fulfilling for him. Um, yeah. I don't care what you buy. It doesn't have to be something I buy. Um, you know, Orient, a Seiko, or a Citizen, or anything else. So, you know, I kind of feel money is well spent in better places. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it it kind of goes into my next point because I was going to talk about the the misunderstanding of of made in China. There's a lot of ignorance about it, um, and there's you know, made in China has a negative connotation. Yep. For for many reasons, but correct. I don't think people understand that there's different levels. That's correct. Know, there's, well. there's some really high end stuff, and of course, at the at the very bottom, you have fakes and replicas, and sure. you know the the fashion watches. To try and kind of un- explain it a bit better, um, a, a micro brand owner that I know, great brand, has been doing it the right way and of being transparent. He physically goes to the factory in China and checks it out every year when there's a new watch t- t- to oversee personally the QC. And and there's some very high stuff. They're, they're, some of their factories are cutting edge. There's just as good as anywhere else in the world. That's true. Um, so there's there is this kind of like misconception about it. And also, I'll give another example. I was I was consulting for a brand, helping them design a watch, and um, they I'm not going to name who it is. It's a it's an entry level, right? Mm-hmm. So we're we're talking under a thousand dollars. Right. And they reached out to a factory in Germany, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, fantastic! That's great!" You know, um, because people have a lot of confidence in German manufacturing. Sure. You know, they have some of the best watches, watch uh, high-end stuff in watches in the world. Everyone knows this. Uh, they got a reputation for it. We got the prototypes back, and they were appalling. Really, L- loom was not applied here. Oh, There's a finishing, man. blah blah blah. At the entry level, they they're not. They're not that good, turns right. out. I mean, look, every factory is different. We could have just got a bad one, but sure. So in the end, the company decided to go back to China, right? And and I saw the prototypes, and they were just they were immaculate, you know. And I, I don't doubt it. And yeah. I and you know I don't think people know you know in a in a Swiss in a, in a Swiss made watch how much of the components actually come from China. Mm. Um, it's it's it, it can be flabbergasting. Mm. And first of all, take the bracelet out of the equation. That doesn't even come into the fact of whether the watch is Swiss made or not on a valuation basis. Mm. You know, so you're splitting it between case, dial, movement, hands, crown, blah 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 blah, and then you got to get to that sixty or whatever number it is now. Um, it's you can have a lot of Chinese components in a watch that still bears the Swiss made moniker. And yeah. I think, like you said, people. You know, made in China has had a very bad connotation since I was a kid. Mm. Um, you know, and I remember somewhere around, uh, not far from where you used to live, near the Elmhurst. But remember where the Elmhurst gas tanks were, off, off the LRE? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> used to, there was a sign. I think it was from Spalding or whatever, and it was a tennis racket. And the advertisement was, it was, it was a double entendre. It was, it, it is very well made in China. So you could take it as it's very well made in China, or it is very well made in China. Like it's great, it's made in China, but it's still great. Or yeah, yeah. it's made in China. And I thought that that was such a great ad. That um, is and, really clever. Yeah. And that's kind of coming true. You know, yeah. I think it's just more and more. The more people I talk to, 
you know, as I get into building watches, they're just like, I can't believe the factories they have, the automation, yeah. um, the quality of work that, yeah. that comes out of there. Yeah. And I, I think to further expand on your point, um, I think people, and maybe this, this is a wider issue, um, you need to judge things on an individual basis. Like right. you judge an individual. Right. You, you don't like to generalize and to pe put people in groups or to put Correct. watches in groups is the same thing. Right. It's no, like, absolutely. Because there's no doubt there's made in China watches that are yeah. garbage. hundred percent. Absolutely. And there are some amazing watches too. And as you just showed, there's probably made in Germany watches that are not that great either. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So, you know. That was yes. my next point. It was. It was. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, no, no. It's back to you. Back to you. No, I. Oh, wait, that was yours? Yeah. I just kind of... Oh, you threw it in there. Yeah. I like what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You're like Kaiser Soze. I didn't even know you were here. Okay. Um, okay, this is a great one. Well, have you uh, been watching films now, Mark? No. I watched it, year, I watched it years ago. That was a deep cut film I know, reference. But I, I, I work still and kids and that, right. that's about it no. <laughs> that's about it but nice. i do love that video that movie yeah it's great look all you scum all sitting out here <laughs> oh, i'm worried about my mortgage worried about my job oh when's the recession gonna end recession what recession oh, i've got loads of money <laughs> So here's one where, again, immediately after the freak, this is the second watch that popped in my head. Rolex Leopard Dial. It's a Daytona. Mm. 116598 Sacco. S A C O is right. the SKU. Um, Sacco is, I, I guess they do this, um, uh, cognac sapphire. So it's cognac colored sapphires around the bezel. Anyway, uh, 2004 introduction at Basel, in Basel, to very lackluster interest. <laughs> but it, was, it discontinued in 2019. Yeah. Um, let me just I guess, let me just discuss some of the particulars about it. So it's yeah. 18 karat yellow gold right. um, Daytona, which that's cool, nice, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Sunken sub, you know, it's dials in gold, great. So like I said, the dial is 36 cognac sapphires mm. all around the outside. So your bezel now forget forget the tachometer or anything. It's just sapphires. Yeah. <laughs> the lugs. Are covered each lug is covered with 24 diamonds right okay and then there's diamonds on the dial the dial is done in a total leopard print a symmetrical leopard print mm -hmm. and then is on a leopard print strap mm, right, right right with a gold clasp i'm gonna bring up it, a picture of this because yeah, I... yeah please so 2004 like i said so i had a 15 year run um i have a buddy that's got so many rolex price lists from historical they they went as high as around 70 grand new Wow. Which I thought was insane. You get them now for around 50 grand. Yeah. But really, it was ugliness before its time. And Jeez. I was and I was like, wow. So think about it. So 2004, it's 17 years ago. This is well before iced out, you know, yeah. rappers and everything right, else. Right, right. Bling watches, which is something we've discussed in the past. So this was really, you know, like I said, ugliness before it actually was a thing. I, I feel like if Rolex came out with the Leopard today, it would be like, well, huh. it's kind of a, you know, they have the rainbow... Uh, Bezel, yeah, uh, right? The rainbow the sapphires. Master, yeah. yeah, yeah, all that stuff. I'm like, well, if they came out with it today, people would give it two looks, say, wow, it's kind of wild. Yeah. But back then, it was like, holy, man, what the hell did they do? What were they thinking? Who's buying this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what sure are they enough, smoking? Yeah. What are they smoking? Why yeah. did they design something like this? Uh, so to me, you know, every time I see one, I, I did happen to see one on display years ago when I was in uh, Lusane. I just... Cra it's a crazy looking watch. In yeah. the pic it's as crazy as it looks for real uh, as it does in the pictures. It's uh, I've seen this watch in Las Vegas, of course. Yeah, of course. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. and I couldn't believe it. And um, it's so loud and obnoxious. It's funny. It's when, when certain watches are blinged out but this is not just blinged out this is the, no. the, the colors it's... are really vibrant. It ends up looking really cheap. Yes, it does. You know what it, I mean? It does. It, it, I, I think the, 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 the clincher is the leopard print on the dial. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's insane. <laughs> and it's symmetric nonetheless. I mean, I just... Whew. There's a picture of uh, Nick Cage where... <laughs> yes, he's like... Whenever, so I actually did research it. Yeah, he's the one that pops up. He bought one, you know, like when it came out. 
it's yeah. you know what on him it's kind of cool because he's well, nuts it anyway he, he can yeah. pull it off yeah. anyway yeah i couldn't pull it off <laughs> in fact actually i have a, a movie poster over there for, called mandy's if it's, it's okay just where is it can you see it in that picture mm, you see it on that camera there you go so what are you gonna do with that thing we're going hunting so what you hunting Crazy evil. It's a revenge film, but there's a there's a a duel with chainsaws in it. Two people trying to kill each other with chainsaws. Nice. Yeah, and, and I just think, yeah, totally makes sense for him. Right for him, yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. He he he's a good, he plays a good nut job. Yeah, exactly, exactly. My God, it's almost I almost respect it, which is weird. Right. <laughs> well, it was very um. Uh, I guess a very not a vibrant decision. It was a very mm. weird decision to uh, as a watch to come out. And like I said back back then, this was like you know we think about it when the the Kermit came out first, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. In two thousand, actually not long after this, I want to say something like that. Anyway, when the Kermit came out, people thought, "Wow, green bezel on a watch. Where is this going? This is yeah. crazy. This yeah. is crazy." Yeah. Look at this freaking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, on the most negative thing you could say is that uh, it does kind of represent everything that I don't like about Rolex. Okay. In, in a, do, do you know what I mean? The, the, the loud, gaudiness, the over the topness. Uh, yeah, it's yes. cut this kind of. I get it. New money vulgarity, you know, it's just like. Oh. Yeah, sorry. There's, that, that, there, there's no stealthiness there. I get no. it. <laughs> no. Watch journalists becoming watch dealers, right? And there's no integrity to the to to a review now. You know? Right. Well, it kind of goes hand in hand with your first point. Exactly, and yeah. it's funny because if you look up the um, the standards of of ethics and um, in journalism, there's a there's a code of practice, right? Five points of of a uh, kind of framework for the codes of journalism. The second one is independence, right? Oh. <laughs> so, and you know, trying to be objective, and I just I I don't understand. Look, doing a limited edition once in a while, that's absolutely fine. I don't have an issue with that. You know, like the brand is honoring the journalist or vice right. versa or something like that. Right. That's that's cool. But the second then but the second you become a watch dealer, it's not impartial. You no. know, it's um, not anymore. Not only for me, but for you guys. Uh, it's always been um, better when it's from the perspective of an enthusiast, I'm sharing my journey and what I'm learning with you. And I think that's crucial because look, what are the choices? You become a watch dealer, right? And then any authenticity goes out the window. Um, the reviews have to be unbiased and they have to be from the perspective of an enthusiast because you can review watches, you can be a watch dealer, you cannot do both. The flip side to this, and I've said this before, is that we have with the internet obviously we got this rise of of these kind of niche blogs that are written by real watch enthusiasts you got right. channels now obviously which which i love that because it's real passion it's from this is why i always say i'm not a expert i'm not a guru i'm just a enthusiast just having fun I'm having fun and, and i always want it to be that way and i'll give you a good example is um glycinecentennial.com which is as the name implies and I've got a sh shout out to Emery's great, great guy. He loves the airman. He loves glycine. And he devotes right. this blog and he deep, deep, deep dives into the history. Amazing stuff. And you feel the passion. You feel the right. love he has right. for this brand, yeah, sure. you know, and you read it and it, it's inspired me. So there's the flip side. And right. now, now they're taking it to a whole new level. They're becoming authorized dealers. Yes, even. a lot of them are. I was yes. like, how? What's going on? You know, <laughs> oh, you know, you gotta look at you look at it from you know the 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 brand's perspective. If the brand doesn't have any morals or yeah, I found that's the term, uh, then the more the merrier. Why not? You're getting my brand in front of millions of people a month, so it's a win for them. And then it goes into what I said before 
when I said YouTube, you know, YouTube doesn't really pay a salary unless no. you're, you know, I would say maybe one or two million subs. Then maybe you're starting to make,、uh, yeah. you know, some coin. Yeah.、Um, so if YouTube isn't paying the bills, but you're doing YouTube, what the hell else are you gonna do? So then you say, okay, well, I'm gonna open a store,、mm. and then I'll start selling watches. Whereas I did it the other way around. I started selling watches, and then I started a YouTube channel. You know, and、um, but I'm but 100. Every video I do, you know, I'm in the bag for what I'm selling because、yeah. I'm the store. And、yeah. there's you know. Well, you I, you I, were a store that went onto YouTube. You're not a YouTuber、yes. that went to that went to store. The store. So、yeah. I well, I am I am with you. I、yeah. understand it. I can't tell you how many times I approached brands to sell their brands, larger brands, and they always said no, 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 no. We want nothing to do with the internet. No, no, no. And now I look, and oh my God, they're they're in this YouTuber store, they're in that YouTuber、mm. store, and、yeah. blah blah blah. And now they're on the internet themselves, or whatever. There's still some great uh, bl- uh, blogs and and and、um, publications out there that still haven't、mm-hmm. haven't done that, and I think have、sure. st- stuck to their guns. And I understand、yes. people have got to make money and stuff, but it's it's got to a point where I I, I can't believe anything they say. That's true as well. I think with you it's different because, like we said, but also you you've done your watch and learn series, and you're an engineer. Which which、yeah. when you're not teaching, what's the what's the word? When you're informing people,、mm-hmm. and they're learning, yeah, that's a service. So, so I would say it's a service. Yeah, yeah. and I I respect that. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I only wrote one word down, or two words. Smartwatches. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. So I wore my smartwatch this morning when I went running,、mm. and it is a Garmin GPS watch, but it has no radio capability. It just plugs into my computer and it downloads my runs.、Mm. That is the extent of smartwatch. Why do I hate smartwatches? Well, quite simply, if if society adopts them. It's basically the downfall of me and everything that I do. It's、mm. you know the end of my business.、Um, so I kind of, you know, I kind of have to hate them.、Um, <laughs> but I just feel you know from from I guess the society aspect. Well, even before we get into that, I watch Spot. I'm sure you watch Spot when you're out. I was in Costco last oh, night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I always look at people's wrists just to see what they're wearing. Yeah. Never know people. Someone might, yeah, might look at their wrist and they look at me and go, "Oh my God, I know you!" But、yeah. this actually happens.、Um, whenever I see a smartwatch, I see a blank face. It's black. Yeah. And I'm like, how is that? I don't know. This doesn't look fun to me. I don't see. There's no vibrancy, and I, you know, I understand it's the whole battery thing or whatever. And but there's no, I don't know. There's no life. There's no life. Yeah. So, but then from a society aspect, I feel like I don't know. We're always on our phones. You know, for me, it's it's work. So if I'm not in front of a computer,、um, I'm on my phone working. I don't have any games on my phone. I mean, maybe there's one or two that my kids play.、Um, but so now we're going like this all the time, and you know, people are, they're reading texts、mm-hmm. or they're I don't know what they're doing.、Uh, maybe a Fitbit is is where I'll say it's okay because a fitness tracker of some、mm-hmm. sort.、Um, but I feel like. You know, we we already look at our phones enough. Why do we now have to have an extension of our phone on our wrist、um, just to kind of separate us from being functioning members of society even yeah, further? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I know, and believe me, I know they caught on. I know. I look at, I'm like, holy crap! I can't believe. I mean, how many people own? Yeah, you know, it's really the iWatch, yeah, right? The Apple、yeah. Watch. That's the one that most people、it's, have. Yeah.、Um, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe it.、So、I, I would say probably a majority of spot of wrist spotting I do now is, unfortunately, smartwatches. Yeah, I I totally get that, and it saddens me as well. I I talked about this in the, in a long time ago, the what I call the biomechanical relationship you have with the with、mm-hmm. the watch. Sure. In a way, the it's a metaphor. The the, the escapement is beating like a heart, and a you heart, have to feed、yeah. it like a tamagotchi to to, to wind it. Oh yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah, I remember those. I was using this analogy, and it's a there's a relationship there. And then when you say when you say it has a soul, it's that's so true because they do have a soul. And the the weird thing is, then then you could say, oh well, what about your Casio? What about a digital watch? Right. Well, but I. I, I don't. I don't put them in the same boat. I find that I have a connection with 
my F91, or, uh, or especially my Mission Impossible, which is just, just a great, great $40 watch. I feel connected to it. There's, a, there's something going on. It, it's, and it doesn't, I never felt that way. I borrowed an, a, a, an Apple Watch, or iWatch, or whatever the hell it is. Oh, okay. I didn't connect with it the same way. Right. And I don't know what it is. It's, it's something ineffable magic that happens with a real watch. And then, then you right. can say, oh, well, define a real watch. Or, well, define a, a, a smart watch. What defines it? To me, a smart watch is uh, um, an annual calendar is a smart watch to me. You know, like, right. so, so I get it's, it. we're, we're, all, we're in this kind of gray area, right? And also it, yes. it dates. It becomes completely, uh, within a few years, I don't like that dependency on... on Oh, okay. Like, like computers used yeah. to be. You gotta get a new one. You gotta get a new one. You gotta get a new Oper one. Operating systems and, and then it doesn't, yeah. it stops charging, blah, blah, blah. Like this Seiko I have on my wrist, I know in 10 years' time it'll be still serviceable. Um, right. You know, like the other day I replaced the gaskets in a watch I had and I was, you know, doing, I'm, look, I'm not, by no means a watchmaker, but doing little alterations, I replaced the battery in another watch and I, and I like that independence. I just, right. You know, um, you don't I don't fundamentally I, I couldn't connect with it and I don't know if that's because I'm right. a watch enthusiast right well that's actually a good point you know I wonder how many watch en if watch enthusiasts enthusiasts have taken to it or do they double wrist maybe they a smart watch on one wrist and the mechanical watch on another yeah. wrist I don't know it's a good question but I know a lot of the smart watches you know will have like wallpaper or whatever it can be like a you know an automatic watch on your wrist and it shows mm. you know all the moving parts but it's just you know just a picture i'm still waiting for the day a, a, a traditional watch company so there's a lot of air quotes going on today uh, a traditional watch company makes a watch that hybridizes kind of that technology. Yeah. i mean i think Frederick constance yeah tried to that's do, what i was gonna yeah. go they tried to do it yeah but then why don't you just buy a normal watch and have a Fitbit, and, you know? Exactly, yeah. Somebody will come along and make something truly that marriages. Both of them successfully. Yeah, and it will be. Maybe it'll be a Reverso. Oh my God, what? Oh my God. <laughs> like the Reverso we had last. Uh... Yeah, exactly. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. A Reverso with mechanical, you reverse it and then it's got a smartwatch. Smart watch on the other side. And maybe it could be modular, so you just take, when it's obsolete, you take it out and put the new. Oh, and you put a new one on. JLC, I'm, I'm. Uh... Yeah, we'll sell <laughs> yeah. it. We're willing to sell the idea. You heard it yeah. here first. <laughs> yeah, email me, please. <laughs> you've mentioned movement, you've mentioned Daniel Wellington. Uh, it's interesting because you approach things in an engineering perspective. I'm I'm an art school kid. The first thing I look at a, at a watch is it how it looks. Right. And the mechanics and it, it is, that comes it comes afterwards. afterwards. I get it. Um, doesn't mean I don't appreciate you know very complicated mechanics. Uh, I do, but for me, the first attraction is looks. The fashion watch. The the overall trend has been this minimalist you know, faux Bauhaus, and I'll explain what I mean by faux Bauhaus. Minimalism, it was a predominantly a, 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 um, a movement in art and ar architecture and design in the 60s and 70s, but it all goes back to Bauhaus, so the pre-war, pre-World War II Bauhaus movement in Germany of cutting things away. Mies van der Rohe coined the phrase, less is more, which has become a cliche, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, sure. But there's a skill in that. There's, there's an actual oh, mathematical yeah. theory. Max Bill, the, the Jung hands. If you didn't appreciate art and culture, you'd think that the yeah, Daniel Wellington or movement was just the ripoff of the, the Jung hands. It is in a way, but they're totally different. One is mathematically the the, the placement of everything in that design language is is, is they the professors teach this. It, there's books right. written about it. You know, it's it's right. mm -hmm. much more profound. Um, so there's, and then um, I have written here, um, do you, you know those brown or brawn watches? Mm, sure, yeah. The shaver, the shaving company. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dieter Rams actually designed the shaving, he designed, he's an industrial designer. 
he designed their watches, the shaving things, all kinds of mm -hmm. uh, home appliances for them. He's one of the most influential designers and he had what he called the 10 principles of, of good design. Okay. Number one is innovation, right? Yeah. These, <laughs> there's no innovation there. It's a no. bankrupt of any kind of actual creative uh, endeavor. It's, it's, the, the, it's, it's so shallow. It's, it's, and what irritates me, and you brought this up earlier, is um, the markup. It's a ripoff. You know, how much yeah, of these... You, you can go online now and order um, by bulk the unbranded, the same watch unbranded, from, direct from the factory, right? And people yeah. are paying $200 on Amazon for this. What yeah. you could have bought, know. you know, real bit of horology, you know, like the only innovation I have to get, cr give them credit for is their marketing. I was just saying there, that, that is, that, like I said, MVMT, that marketing geniuses, mm. a little bit of design. MVMT, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, so let's think about this. The Phantom Watch phase was around about a decade yeah. ago, black on black and stuff. And they were kind of hard to read, great numbers. But these are watches where there's a, a black subdial. A red hand, but no scale. Right, right. So what the hell's the point? And they're selling yeah. that. Sorry to interrupt. Number two. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go number ahead. two uh, of the 10 principles of good design. Number two, uh, make sure the product is useful. There you go. So how are you going to time anything with the chronograph? With you can't. <laughs> it, like you said, it's a fashion piece. It's all it's made to do is fashion. Yeah, the, the innovation was really in how they were sold, marketed, and packaged yep. i looked at the profit profit and loss of movado to see okay to see if the pandemic has affected them because obviously they they people are going to the store less they're right. still very very strong on amazon they are actually movado reported their first loss since 2008 or something okay the highest profit they had was just after the acquisition of um uh, movement but let's end on a on a on a silver lining if it got you into watches, then I'm, then happy. I'm happy. If you love your Daniel Wineson, then I'm happy for you. I'm happy yeah. as well. If you love your Invicta, you love whatever you like. People, there's people that like them and people that hate them. If you like it, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. And it is a gateway into the hobby. So that's fine. Absolutely. It is. All of these things are gateways. So would you say you, you, you despise smartwatches more than fashion watches? Ooh. Because because fashion watches are taking advantage of people. That's a good question. There's something a little bit more malicious there. I have to despise smart watches, like I said, because, you know, it would spell the end of me, which I got to get another, give me another 10 to 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, then do another frick your watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, fashion watches, I yeah. would say I despise more. I, yeah, I would because this is so. There's just so much wrong about it. You know, the epiphany came to me when I was sitting with a wholesaler that I know, very nice guy, very nice. So he just deals in parallel imports, which is something that I just don't want to. You know, it's a train I don't want to get on. And he's like, oh, he's like, you know, if you need any Daniel Wellington, you know, minimum order was like twenty or thirty thousand pieces, um, but it was like three fifty or four bucks. A watch mm. and I was like wow that's the wholesale I mean that's what you're I mean I can imagine what it cost at the factory and that like opened my eyes yeah. I was like holy smokes yeah. and like they're just selling mark they're selling marketing they're in the marketing business that is taking the advantage of people I would say so you know you know more so than the Invicta 7x markup scheme that they do oh yeah um yeah but at least the Invicta I, has I, some real history behind it but yeah I think so I th I'd say fashion more than smart at least smart watch I can kind of Oh, I can kind of appreciate it a little bit because it does serve people a function and it's doing something. Fair enough. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, Thank you. Guys, if you have, what, what is your most loathed watch? Uh, please do nominate. And why? I want to hear why. That's, I always love reading the comments. Uh, so do share that down below. Uh, Mark, thank you very, very much uh, for sponsoring the production of this video. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank and you. guys, don't forget to like, check out Mark's channel. I, I, forget, to, I forget to do this. It's okay. Um, no, it's okay. We didn't do... Th no, it's, it's not doing good. Uh, I don't know what happened. I feel like it's stalled. I want to say the last time was like 46-something. Come on, guys. Come on. F 
please, the please hell? follow uh, Mark on the Instagram. I'll leave a link to that as well, all right? I'm doing giveaways on the channel, on the YouTube channel too. I started a whole giveaway series. Nice. I've given away, gave away three Islanders in one giveaway. I gave away a turtle. Last week I gave away 500 bucks in in a gift card. So wow. I'm doing good giveaways. Nice, so cool. Something to check out. Check out the giveaways. <laughs> All right, guys, um, thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Take care.